Hello minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Coming to you face to face today. I know, it's been a while. I kind of tend to go over this step when things are really, really busy. And man, have things been hectic on the personal side of life. But I managed to bring you another video today and I'm excited about it. I had a lot of fun making it. Perhaps you remember this. And if you haven't seen this video, I'll have a link to it below. This is a line and wash, but it's actually a wash and line so what i did was a spontaneous painting which i know a lot of you out there love but then i added the line on top of it to bring definition to those sort of amorphous shapes we're going to do something very very similar to that today only we're going to use watercolor pencil and it makes for a really fascinating sort of stylized look that might really appeal to some of you and it's just a lot of fun so everybody give it up for my good buddy my studio assistant reese been a while hasn't it well you haven't really uh kind of done a face-to-face -face with our uh viewers in a while well reese is not saying much today but he's anxious to get started i'm anxious to get started but i thought i would just present myself live again just so you know i really am still alive and i want to have a good look back at you guys no i can't actually see you but i'm imagining you all of you all the thousands of you out there anyway let's go paint well, for this piece, I'm going to use Arches 300 pound, and this is the hot press, not the cold press. So as you know, uh, 300 pound is a very, very heavy paper, very thirsty. I found the sizing to be a little odd in this compared to the 140, uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit more later. It just uh, made for some kind of troublesome lifting. This is the color scheme. This is uh, cobalt blue nickel quinacridone gold and quinacridone violet i really wanted to try this this triad which is essentially a primary triad but it's it's deep so i'm just going to get colors out on my palette and get them prepped mostly what you'll see in this painting are the quin gold and the quin violet with a little bit of blue splashed in where a sky might be I love doing spontaneous paintings with limited palettes. I just think it makes them a little bit more interesting. It's good color mixing, color theory practice. Now, what I'm doing here is just spattering the paper. I'm not thoroughly wetting it. Uh, I pull the trigger very softly and I get a spatter. And what that does is you'll see the edges where I'm applying the washes. You get a creeping effect. And you can even go in like I'm doing here and add a little more. But the trick is uh, to use a trigger sprayer with an adjustable nozzle and I'll just barely pull it. If I started spraying heavily, I would saturate the paper and I'd get a different effect. And I'll do that a little later and you'll see the difference. Right there. You get a soft flow when you start really heavily spraying the paper. And here I'm, I'm sort of just spraying parts of it and directionally guiding the paint. Usually in a spontaneous landscape, I'm trying to establish a tree line, uh, a baseline, or a ground plane, so to speak, and something that sort of hints at sky. There, right there, I'm tapping in what might be a ground plane. And then I have like uh, areas that would fall off to the front, maybe an incline or a slope, who knows. And I'm just taking a dry brush I'm trying to lift. Just trying to pick up some of the wet paint. This is where I found the sizing on this to be a little different from the 140 papers. This felt uh, very internally sized, like it didn't have a lot of surface sizing. So it was, it was kind of weird. Uh, I wasn't getting a lot of lifting action like I'm normally used to. But it, it did all right. Here, I'm just guiding some of the paint that's already down. I pretty much already have a composition that's kind of presented itself and I'm, I'm getting pretty happy with. So I'm just guiding the paint into some of those little uh, spatter areas. Decided to add a little more sky as clouds and sky. 
with a wet brush, I'm trying to uh, do some wet lifting by forcing back the pigment. It's like a controlled backwash. So you're seeing a few little areas that get highlighted from due to lifting. And I'm pretty happy with that for my base. I'm just drying it with a heat tool. You can use a heat tool to dry. Uh, and I usually do dry. A lot of times I'll just walk away from a 140 pound paper and let it dry. Uh, you can dry watercolors with hair dryers or a heat tool. I especially like doing it with 300 pound because uh, it's so thirsty and takes longer to dry. Here's my color scheme matched up in the pencils. I just picked an array of pencils that match the color scheme, both light and dark values. And we're going to start the line work. And I'm really kind of excited about this because I have a nice base established. This is the concept or the approach, very similar to what I did with pen and ink. I went in and picked out those shapes with an ink line, but this time I'll be using pencils. Now, the process that I go through in spontaneous painting is uh, a process of render and assess, I guess is a way to put it. I'll do some work where I think there might be some good uh, chance for like foliage rendering, trees, whatever. I look for edges. Then I'll step back and assess it and see where to go next and what to do next. There's very little that I plan. Let the painting kind of direct me. I'm using a water pen or a water brush. This is the Pentel Aquash. I do this with watercolor pencil. I just find it easier and quicker than constantly dipping a brush in water. You can do that too. That's fine. But it just kind of uh, speeds up the process and makes it go smoother for me. And I get a nice even application of water all the time. Now, what I'm doing is actually activating these lines. I'm leaving a lot of it as line. I am pulling some tone away from the line in places where I want it to be darker, essentially. And I think that's the key to doing this particular technique is looking for edges that present themselves as natural shapes. I have a lot of people that tell me they don't know how I see what I see. And a lot of it just has to do with your visual library. I've done tons and tons of landscapes. So after a while, you start to see these bush and tree and land forms. And it becomes a little easier to pick them out. But you get better at it just by doing it. It's not really some innate ability. You know, I've told this story before, but I do spontaneous painting, or I started doing spontaneous painting years ago as a way of trying different techniques. And then just seeing how far I could take uh, those splashes of color into actual paintings, and it just became really fun. So, uh, again, I, I caution you, don't necessarily try to go into a spontaneous painting thinking, oh, I've got to come out of this with a really great painting. Uh, you'll de be disappointed because I've got a lot of spontaneous scraps, <laughs> believe me. Think of it in terms of, I'm going to enjoy the paint, I'm going to enjoy what it does, I'm going to see what it does. Now here I'm using white watercolor pencil and white watercolor pencil is a little weak compared to something like a Prismacolor or a Polychromos, but over dark paint, it does show up. Now, actually, if, if you're trying to get some white or light details, I don't have it on video here, but I did use some Prismacolor and it will be a little more opaque, uh, but I wouldn't do that until the end. The advantage to a uh, white watercolor pencil is that if you want to 
spread it or blend it or cut it back, you know, in value a little bit, you can do that with water. And I didn't mind the subtlety of it because I only wanted a little bit of highlighting to some edges. I didn't need it to be really bright white. These pencils just make for some great little fiddly details along the edges. I treated the bottom half of this very stylized, very impressionistic, very expressive. And the pencils are great for trees and tree branches. And uh, you don't have to activate watercolor pencil. I mean, it stays a little uh, lighter. I usually uh, will activate most of it, at least just to set it in. But I do leave some of it unactivated. And again, sometimes I'll just activate and set that line in. Other times I will pull tone away from the line for shading. I love watching these paintings develop. It's like seeing a photo in a dark room, you know, just kind of materialize. Now, uh, as a final pop, sort of a low light, I'm adding some black in some of the really recessed areas. By the time I activate it into a wash, it'll also take on the color underneath it. But uh, I like using it just to put in those really low light pops here and there. A little more white again. As I said, it shows up decently over dark paint. It's not a really highly opaque white, though. And we're coming to the end. Those nice little... Shards of contrast, I think, are uh, a good crowning touch. This is the final step. I'm just bringing in uh, a number eight round and glazing in some color in spots. Just here and there. Just to quickly darken with a little bit of color in places. Not all the details have have to be in pencil. All right, so we're done. Here's the final. Give you a few close-up looks here to see with the technique. I really love doing that bottom part. I'm happy. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you'll try it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, patrons, for your support. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.